Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video, we're doing the ECM WF uh, 30 day look at uh, for today's uh, first video. So uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, mean soil pressure, 500 millibar height, temperature and precipitation anomalies for UK and for the rest of uh, Europe as well for the next uh, 30 days, next four weeks. And I shall get on that for you uh, very shortly, uh, just say that we can extend out to weeks five and six. Uh, with this, uh, but uh, we're going to stop at week four as it is a 30 day look ahead and we'll show you uh, weeks five and six data as part of our live stream uh, tomorrow from uh, six o'clock in the evening. Uh, later on today, we'll have a 10 to 14 day uh, video update. Still chopping and changing about this beastly easterly. So, uh, so I'll explain all what's going on in today's 10 to 14 day. But it's never straightforward to get in, uh, get the beast, uh, get the beast in. Um, and uh, so they're still chopping and changing there. More about that. Uh, later on. Big thank you to ecmdf.int for uh, supplying uh, the charts for this update. Right, so uh, this is the uh, week one um, mean silver pressure anomaly uh, for Europe. This is going to take us from the 1st to the 8th of February. So you're going to have high pressure around Greenland and Iceland continue to block as it has done so throughout the winter and into Scandinavia as well. Low pressure is across northern, eastern, central and western Europe as well. Be drawing in cold easterly winds potentially across northern Europe. Jet stream is down here somewhere into uh, the Mediterranean. Um, and possibly pulling up some minor air at the east side of Europe. There's a bit of a ridge here around the Black Sea, and so that could bring up some uh, warmer air into the uh, far sort of east and southeast of Europe. Uh, this is the 500 millibar height on Actually, let's remove that so you can see what's happening in the east southeast. So this shows what's going on from the North Pole view down. Also, you've got the blocking here around green, extending back into the Arctic. Low pressure then is covering most of northern and western uh, Europe, but high pressure is through the eastern part of the Med and extending up east side of Europe. And that draws up milder air. Uh, from North Africa, like into Central and Eastern parts of Europe. But at the same time, we're drawing colder air from the Arctic into into the north and northwest of Europe. So essentially, it's uh, cold uh, cold air being drawn into the northwest, and mild air being drawn up the eastern, southeastern side of uh, Europe. So temperature on it shows a really stark uh, northwest southeast split. So much of northern and western Europe, particularly Scandinavia, but also down into much of the UK and Ireland and through like Denmark, northern Germany, northern Poland, into these Baltic Sea and uh, northeastern states like uh, Latvia, Estonia, and into northwest Russia as well. All those areas are colder than average. Anywhere south and east of that is substantially milder than average, and particularly so light from southern eastern France over towards uh, over towards Hungary and then down into the Balkans, through to Black Sea. Um, they're in those red colours, actually. So that's a temperature anomaly of around uh, 6 to 10 degrees uh, above average. But uh, on the other hand, like uh, Norway, for example, some parts of Norway, around 8 to 10 degrees below average. So a very, very dramatic northwest southeast split uh, temperature anomaly uh, this week from the 1st to the 8th of February. The precipitation anomaly uh, looks like that. So uh, again, you see where the blocking is. It's up towards Greenland and Iceland and back in Scandinavia, where it's drier uh, than average. It's also dry in the southern and southeastern part of Europe, from Italy over the Adriatic into the Balkans and down to southeast Europe. It's generally drier than average through those areas, and as we're under a ridge of high pressure. And then you get this swathe of wetter weather here. Some of it, some of it rain in the southwest, some of it significant snow in uh, the northeast. So from Spain right way up to western Russia, you get that swathe of uh, wetter weather. And of course, that will be uh, where the jet stream is pushing through to as well. High pressure through there, and then high pressure blocking uh, within the northern latitudes as well. 
Uh, right, so uh, that's week uh, one uh, done. Let's have a look at week two then, uh, shall we? So it's going to take us to the 8th, 15th of February. Very little change, uh, really, in this week. We still have blocking around Greenland and Iceland and back into Scandinavia as well. Low pressure still coming in from the Atlantic into much of uh, southern Western South, Western Europe, Jetson, probably still down here somewhere. Uh, probably still drawing in easy winds across much of northern uh, Europe and into northwestern parts of Europe uh, as well, perhaps. The uh, 500 mm of our height anomaly for week two uh, looks like this. So again, still this mild ridge in the southeastern part of Europe, still below pressure in the northeast and in the west as well, still with northern blocking. Jet stream still probably down here somewhere. It's just Jerry looking quite cold again, I think, for much of northern uh, Europe. Week 2 temperature anomaly, again, looks cold in the north. So uh, from Ireland and the UK in the west, right way over to western Russia in the east. And all, in, all points in between, we're looking significantly colder than average. Southern Europe looks generally milder than average. Spain and Portugal in the west, right way over to Greece in the east. Um... Above average temperatures, and particularly so again in the southeastern corner, so from the Balkans to the Black Sea, down into uh, into the eastern part of the Mediterranean as well, uh, significantly above average temperatures through there. So once more, have a proper north-south split with the cold air really up in the north, the mild air down in the south uh, once again. Northern Germany, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, Denmark, uh, Northern Poland, uh, cold and average shoot there. France is mild and average in the south of France, goes to cold and average in the far north of France, um, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, proper, proper north-south split for temperature. And precipitation wise, uh, we look like that. So, uh, again, a three way split southeastern parts of the men into uh, eat the far east of Europe. It's driving an average, also driving average across northern Europe where we've got the northern blocking. Uh, the high pressure is up here. Of course, any precipitation that does fall, with it being so cold, it's going to be snow, but it's not going to be huge amounts of precipitation around given high pressure will be dominating. And then in between, again, it's wetter than average. Um, so, so, like parts of the UK, wetter than average. France, Western France anyway, Spain and Portugal wetter than average. Um, and in this eastern part of Europe as well, northeastern Europe, it also looks a little bit above average for uh, precipitation. Where it's cold, of course, most of the precipitation will be snow. Interestingly, you can see that for the UK, it's driving average in the northwest, wetter than average in the east, and it's got easy winds. A lot of that precipitation for eastern parts of England uh, could be snow. Uh, week three is going to be the 15th, 22nd of February. This one's still showing a lot of blocking uh, within the normal latitudes. Lots of high pressure sitting from Greenland uh, and Iceland over Scandinavia. A little bit of higher pressure extending down into west of Europe as well. Otherwise, we have a weakening signal. Maybe some lower pressure in the east and the southeast of Europe um, this time. The week three 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So, uh, again, blocking in the north, extending down this western side of the Europe. A trough of low pressure probably being pushed east, was taking cold weather into the east of Europe here, uh, perhaps. Week three temperature anomaly shows that it's beginning to get a little bit less cold across northern Europe, although it is still substantially below average from Scandinavia back to uh, Western Russia, but not as cold on the western side of Europe. Ireland goes a little bit milder than average, for example. UK uh, sort of um, sees the temperature going back close to average or has no signal. Probably a bit milder in the southwestern corner uh, as well. So, yeah, just maybe a slight recovery of temperatures beginning to take place there. Uh, into uh, week 3, 15, 22nd of, uh, of February. That said, much of Northern Europe is still cold. Many parts of Southern Europe uh, are milder than average. And the week 3 uh, precipitation anomaly from 15, 22nd of February. Weakening signals, but rather on the drier side, perhaps for the west and for the northwest. Most of the med, particularly the southwest med, also looking rather dry 
eastern parts of Europe looking uh, a bit wetter than average. As it goes a bit colder, maybe in the east of Europe, some precipitation could be snow. And then finally, for this update, week four takes us from the uh, 22nd of February to the 1st of March. We look like this. So high pressure again in the middle of the North Atlantic, extending down into uh, the UK. Otherwise, not a lot to go on. This will probably still be keeping the wind in from a north to northeasterly direction, I would have thought. So, overall, I would anticipate this is still quite cold, really, uh, for much of northern Europe. Otherwise, signals are weakening. The week for 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So, the high pressure is over the country and away to the northwest. Trough of low pressure in the east. Again, winds could be coming in from the north to northeast. Um, so I still think that could be quite cold, really, for much of uh, northern Europe. The weak uh, for temperature anomaly, weakening signals, but still really looking quite cold, don't they? Much of uh, much of northern Europe. Uh, quite warm across uh, uh, in the North Atlantic and up to Greenland, so suddenly it's probably going up to there. So, so of course, we've got this ridge uh, that's sitting through here. That probably brings cold northerly through here. A mild uh, southerly is up to up to Greenland kind of thing. Um, uh, but anyway, in terms of precipitation, uh, in terms of temperature, I should say, rather cold for northern Europe. Still a little bit mild on average in the southeastern part of Europe. No real changes to, to the broad uh, type pattern, really. And the weak uh, for uh, precipitation anomaly looks rather dry in the northwest. So Scandinavia, Ireland, UK... Um, looking rather dry through there. Otherwise, quite weak signals, really, in uh, most parts of Europe, as you expect by the time you get through to week four. So, yeah, you know, it looks like we continue with this idea of, uh, of generally cold weather from, from much of northern and northwest Europe through, through February. I mean, there may be some minor interludes in there, but generally a lot of blocking uh, going on and a lot of cold weather to come for the north and west. You're always mildest in, in the east and in the southeast of Europe and through the Med as well uh, by, by the look of it. That takes us to the beginning of March, and we'll extend out beyond that week's five uh, and six data in our live stream uh, tomorrow, or as part of our live stream tomorrow, and that'll be from six o'clock, so you're able to see uh, where there's any signs of spring. Uh, through the first half of March in the live uh, tomorrow. We'll be back later on, your 10 to 14 day, uh, and uh, of course, that's going to be trying to nail down what's going on with the beastly east, and there's all sorts of headaches still there. So we'll be back later on with that, and I expect we'll have a 12Z roundup or something uh, tonight. Uh, for this one, though, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching.